I felt as and welcome and in today's video we are going to make this little lady. You can call her a fairy, a mother earth figure, a Waldorf toy. Um, October is breast cancer awareness month hence the pink and I have decided to raise some money. So all I need you to do is literally watch the video. The earnings for the first six months of this video are going to go towards breast cancer and this lady is going to go up for sale on my Etsy shop when I post this video. So um, and the full proceeds of the sale of this lady will go towards uh, breast cancer. So let's get started. So the wool I'm using is carded Coradel eggshell slithers, sliders from World of Wool. Really good sort of flesh colour. I've got some paper covered wire from Heidi Feathers. You can use any wire and wrap it with pipe cleaners or floristry tape. So just, I took two because it makes it a bit stronger and I've just twisted and this is the head shape at the top here. The head ultimately was one and a half inches. The rest of the body was another six stroke, was it seven? I'll put all the measurements. Um, it, see this here, it's seven inches in total. I think I add another inch on at the bottom in wool. Um, so I'll put all the measurements in the description. So I just took some of the... Um, eggshell and we're just wrapping it round to make the head so just wrap it round that um, oval shape that you made so it really helps you and supports you straight off and we're going to sort of felt a little bit into the top so that you're going to get the rounded top end and then so here I'm just sort of forcing it into a shape because it was feeling a little bit long um, and felt it on and then felt the upside down bit because this is going to be sort of the bottom of the chin the neck we're going to do in a minute separately but here I am felting really downwards so you're sort of creating that that chin shape it does not this face does not have to be perfect you could literally do a round ball and it looks absolutely fine um, and then I've just added a little bit more mainly around the middle but also just to sort of smooth it all um, and give it a nice sort of finish because the head we really want it to be as smooth as possible. So attach it all on and then take a finer needle. This is a 38, I believe. Um, and then just go over and felt it all the way around. I'd switch quite a lot between the 38 and the 40 spiral. So that's the head done. And it did take me a good half an hour just to sort of work it all the way around. And then next we're going to do the neck. So a nice thin piece. And you can see I've left a little bit just underneath the chin to help attach it upwards and this keeps it sort of all secure so the head's not moving down if you attach the neck underneath see there then the neck will definitely be attached it's the 40 spiral I'm on now and um, just go very gentle because of the wire just a light tapping and you shouldn't break your needle and then the next bit we attach on attaches firmly to the neck so none of it sort of slips down and we're aiming to just build out the shoulders a bit not that much we're just making this area underneath the neck so leave a well the neck's probably about a quarter inch it's a very small amount um, and we're just building this area outwards once we add the arms they will give you the actual shoulders so you don't need to create the whole shoulders from nothing so felt round we're still in the flesh color you, you probably wouldn't have to but um I think here because it's sort of so close to the neck I would leave it flesh color and you're going to have the little v showing as well so you definitely want that to be flesh color at the front so that's the first layer I've just built up I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so add another layer on and because everything's attached sort of going upwards this bit's nice and secure as well so if you give it a pull down it doesn't slip off the wire if you have got just wire this is going to be a lot harder you're going to have to felt it really tight now I just wanted to build the rest of her just to get everything in proportion um, I find it easier if I can see the full length as to where to put the arms so I've literally taken this is a carded perindale bat that I use all the time you can use whatever core wool you've got and we're just building up and building up the base of her skirt um, see how tightly I'm rolling it there the tighter you roll it the quicker it is to felt to take a nice thick needle um, you can go to a multi-tool in a minute but you're quite close to the wire here and this is just attached to the bottom of the flesh color there so head 
the head is about um the body is about four times the length of the head so i needed to definitely have it a lot longer and this is where the waist is going to go around about here and like i said i've got measurements the waist was three and a half inches down from the head on my lady and i've got the length of the arms as well so do have a look in description so just building up the skirt because the skirt's going to be absolutely sort of massive so you've got a lot of building up to do and it's really great because she stands so well on this skirt base so this is the bit you definitely want it to be nicely felted so i'm just applying it all on and there's the waist there that's where i'm judging it to be at the moment so definitely underneath is where we want the skirt to sort of come out a little bit and then you can see i've still got loads more to do and keeping it nice and tight there just saves you that time multi-needle tool so i think i've got two 40s in this pen the clover pen and we're starting to felt upwards to try and get the flat base and we're making the base area we've still got a lot more to to add here and it is up to you however large you want her skirt to be you might want her to be a, a bit more slender but she will stand really well and then yeah the four needle multi-tool holder can come out now because you're sort of a lot further away and it just helps you just get the wool on and still building up here and we're going to do the top coat color on top afterwards so that's going to add another little bit of thickness too but i definitely wanted the base to be quite big and lots of upward felting now you definitely want to get the flat base and test her every now and again make sure she's standing but the width of it that i do it um she's not wobbly at all and then i just sort of try to sort of work out where the waist was going to be again so this is the arms uncut at the moment i'm just testing out how i'm going to do them and just to show you i'm going to put them there and then i'm going to wrap it round but the arms are going to just come down i'm just sort of trying to judge the height there's the waist and then you can see i've wrapped the wire around her neck uh testing that the arms are the right length now i think in total with the wrapping if you had the wire on its own it's nine inches nine inches there um so we're going to wrap the arms before we attach them because it's a nightmare to do it the other way around <laughs> um so you find the midway point because this midway point you don't need to wrap too much wool there because it's all going to be covered up and also it would affect how you wrap the arms around her her neck so i have shown quite a bit of the wrapping because i know loads of people struggle with wrapping wool so you can just see, I mean, this wool is a little bit messy here, but it's not a problem. I'm trying to keep it nice and tight. I was pulling out loads of bits out of this wool, but um, and you do need to pull the stuff out because it's going to show. But the wool is nice and long and flat. See how I'm keeping it flat to the arm? There's no twists going in. And even though we've got the paper, it does it doesn't stick that well. So I'm just holding it with my hand at the end there and just going along and just checking it as I go and holding it as I go it is tricky um and I had bent the arm in just so it wasn't sharp but I realized I could use that so I unbent it uh twisted the wool all the way to the end and then once you wrap it in it's um fold the bend back in it will hold the wool for you so that's um, a really good little trick so I get my flat nose pliers all of my tools and everything I really like are all listed in my Amazon shop in the description and you get up the description by pressing the little arrow, the downward arrow. So here I am just twisting the wool back on so it stays nice and tight because it had come untwisted a little bit and then start felting it on and I'm on the 38 triangle needle here um, and then I, I do go on to a finer needle quite often and at 45 degrees because that really helps you catch all the fibers this is the first layer we're going to add some more so this doesn't have to be perfect we're just attaching the wool on so that we can let go of it and it doesn't unravel and straighten the wire a bit my wire had got a bit wonky a bit bent and so we're going to attach the next bit and this bit we want to be neat um, this top area of the shoulder doesn't matter too much but further down the arm does and we're going to stop short of the hand and leave that area as the wrist so you don't want to go all the way down you want to stop about three quarters of an inch short 
but see how I'm holding it, tightly wrapping it, nice and flat. There's a little bit there, get that out because that's going to show. There was so much, um, so many bits in this wool, but, you know, sometimes they're, they're good, sometimes they're not. And uh, the world of wool can't control how many bits are in their wool. Um, and so I think I'm on the 40 spiral needle, just tapping it in and very shallow taps here because otherwise you're going to felt it into your mat and if you roll and twist that helps um or roll and felt as you go so we're just going to do the hand so i literally take a small amount of wool and wrap wrap round 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 um and i'm holding onto the wrist area so i know that i'm not letting the wool go into the wrist too much and literally it's just add a tiny bit of extra wool and this gives the impression of a hand then felt upwards from the top make sure you've covered the end of the wire and then just felt that in and on and that gives you the hand and just felt the wrist down so it's definitely a little bit smaller than the hand and it was really a small amount of wool for that hand you don't need much so there we go and then you would uh, put a little bend in for the elbow and you can see how you can start to shape it and it can start to be the hand. I was going to do her holding a bunch of flowers in a way, but um, so there we go. I've done the other side. I changed my mind in the end. Um, so we're going to, <laughs> this is a little bit fiddly because you have to get it the right length, wrap it, and then the other arm has to match the right length as well. But it holds on really nicely, so it's really good. So have a bit of a fiddle <laughs> and a bit of a play because you move it a tiny bit and the other arm ends up being really long. So, but it's a really easy way of attaching arms and they're really secure. That's why I quite like it. See, look, they're the wrong length there. So I had to just keep fiddling. <laughs> and keep that wire sort of down a bit and we're going to cover it up now there we go so i was happy with the the length in the end and you see how you've naturally got the shoulders already forming so we're taking the flesh colored wool here and we're attaching it over the top of the shoulders almost as if we were going to do that's how we do the dress in a minute the top of the dress um so you attach one bit on one side another bit on the another on the other side and then we're going to put some more across the front to give her a sort of chest area. So just felt that on. And this is going to be covered up so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just the little V bits going to show at the top there just under the neck. So that's the bit we definitely want to look neat and be flesh coloured. And try and keep her neck free because you don't want her neck to disappear. And just felt a little bit on the top of the arms but honestly this bit this area is going to be covered so and then i did build up her chest area it's up to you you might not want her to have too much but i thought i'd build it up a bit but in all honesty when you put the wool over the top the way we do it doesn't it doesn't show either way that much so and then i just sort of made sure she's still got her waist just to find the waist a little bit so there we go there's the arms see how she could be anything she, you know it's a lovely base shape now um we're going to just do this waist area around here because the sides bit under the arm there at the sides uh could show when we wrap the wool over the top so you definitely want it uh to be you don't want flesh color showing around there so just fill in the waist and then here we go the fun bit start adding your color on to the skirt and i'm not gonna lie this took a long time. It's fine adding it all on and making sure there's no patches of white showing through. Um, and so just work your way around and get the multi-needle tool, just get everything on, try and get the base a little bit flat. And then you know how I do it. You've probably watched my videos a few times. I spend a long time going over, here we are, smoothing it out. Now this smoothing out took me probably an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> I didn't know, I was probably disturbed quite a lot by the children and all that. But it did take a long time. I did use a, just a 38, I think, in the end. And, you know, it's a lovely effect when it's all smooth and all done and you've got a flat bottom. Um, it looks really good. I just put that around the top there just to cover her modesty. I think I showed her to my 
patrons at one point so so take that bit off we don't need that <laughs> and we're going to properly do the top of the dress so this is the wool i had chosen it's from world of wool i will try and remember i think it's rainbow um, but it's a really nice color for what i wanted so we're going to take one piece and it's going to go across that shoulder and then another piece and that's going to be the top of the dress really easy this way you could do it under the arms um, but you're going to have to neaten her shoulders really well if you're going to do that. So attach one side and then pull it over and smooth it and make sure it, it um, is, is tight enough because it has to be fairly tight to look good. And then felt the back of it. And remember, we, we, we want a sort of straight line around the waist. So when you attach it, going to attach it in a straightish line so that you don't, don't let any of it come down. And we're going to put a ribbon around her waist to cover all of this up. So once it's attached, cut all the excess off. And then just felt it in a bit. I'd roughed up the uh, skirt there. So just felt it in. And that's how we want it to look. And then we're going to put a ribbon round. Now, I put a bright green one on, which was quite bright in the end. So you could put a more muted colour on whatever ribbon you've got lying around. Or you can get some tops um, or some carded wool. Whatever you've got, you know, you can use. But this was quite quick and easy, this ribbon. And then I tied it in a double knot at the back. I tried it with a bow. I tried it with bits hanging down, but it just didn't look right. So I just cut it off and we've just done. Her hair is going to cover all of this at the back, so it doesn't matter. So there we go, that was a really quick and easy way to do the waist. Just playing around with her arms there, just trying to work out what I was gonna do with them. Now, because it's breast cancer, obviously I've got the breast cancer ribbon color, and so I've sewn it into the shape of the bow. And then we're going to attach this to the waistband. This is just me doing my extra accessories. This is where you can start to have a little bit of fun. Um, go on Pinterest, have a look at other fairies out there, other Mother Earth figures. I think Mother Earth is normally when they're pregnant, but, um, but just have a look through for inspiration. You can do lots of designs on the dress itself. That would be really, really beautiful. Lots of people felt flowers on them. So I just... These little flowers I got off Amazon a, a while ago, um, I'm going to use them for a unicorn I'm going to do in the future. I haven't got around to him. So I just sewed it all on and then sewed it through and that worked really well for me. So I'm quite happy with her so far. We're just going to do her hair. Now I tried a, a lot of hair colours before I came to the conclusion of brown. Um, I think it suits her best. Um, so do play around with hair colour. Any tops you've got you can use. So I take a section. This is the back of her head. And I felt down through the, the bottom bit and we're going to fold the hair back down and over it. So you've got an, an inch there left and you felt through and then fold it back down. And that gives you a really nice effect. So this is the very top of the head. Well, not the very top, but the back sort of top area. Um, just felt through again. I needed a little bit more bulk there. Spread it out a bit. And then we're going to do a little side bit. So I wanted her hair to be parting on the side. So this is the smaller section and then that's going to fold down. And then we're going to do the larger section going across. Here we go, like that. And I'm not sure what tops these were. It was just in a bag that I had, but you know, there's absolutely loads of world of wool, various brown colors. This gap was a bit too wide there. You can see the parting. We didn't want that. So you move it back and then just felt a little bit further over and you will cover up that gap. You don't need to take it off and move it. So just felt a little bit further over. And there we go. That's a lot better. And then just fiddle around with the hair, smooth some of it back behind. Uh, we do felt it down a little bit towards the end, but we've just got a few more details to put on. So I wanted her to have a little plait. So felt the end in, do the plait, felt the end of the plait together so that you don't have to use a tie. And then uh, trim off the excess and just felt it in. And we're going to cover this up with the bow and um, flower as well. So there we go. That's the plait there. And you could do just the flower. That would look really pretty. But I wanted to emphasize the breast cancer again. So I've done another 
ribbon and bow. This was quite tricky sewing onto her head. There we go. So that's how I'm going to attach it. But I had to go through. I had to lift her hair up. I felt awful <laughs> going right through her head here. Um, but it does. It's really uh, quite firm and it, it stays on really well. So I was very pleased with it in the end. The bow was slightly smaller than the one around her waist. And then just go round and felt the hair down a bit. Not much. Just the odd little tap here or there. And it, it just sort of makes the hair look more natural. Little felts with... Um, the 40 spiral and they go so it looks a little bit more natural so here she is all done and if you've watched this video you are helping support breast cancer awareness month straight away so what i would love for you to do is put an emoji in the comments your favorite emoji a fairy emoji whatever emoji you want because putting comments on boosts the video and the more people that view the video the more money we raise and this lady is going to go on etsy after this but i really hope you've enjoyed it i think she's a lovely shape and style to be able to take forwards and do more so thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you again soon